I basically belong to Kerala, but I was sort of brought up in Pune, and I did my entire schooling, medical education in Pune. And once I finished my MS in general surgery from Pune, Vijay Medical College in Pune, I then moved to various parts of South India. I first moved to Bangalore, then Trivandrum. Later, I did my oncology MCH in Chennai, Adyar. Then moved to Manipal, and a brief stint for three years in Vijayawada. And then now, finally, I have from 2003 onwards, I am working at Amrita Institute, Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences in Cochin. What is very important is to have role models. You know, somebody whom you can emulate, somebody whom you can see in person, whom you would like to be, somebody whom you can visualize yourself 20 years, 30 years down the line. This is how I would like to be. If you have a good role model, then it makes you so much more. You know. inspires you to reach those heights that you want to reach and i have been very lucky to have two such role models in my life in fact when i was doing my surgery my surgery guide the person whom i did my surgery was dr mrs mj mehta mehru jal mehta who is a surgical oncologist by training in pune and she was a very inspirational figure she lived and uh, breathed for her patients you know she was so involved with patient management with oncology care with taking care of patients so well that it really made us want to do more you know so that is one set of inspiration when i finished my general surgery also i felt i should go in for oncology because i already had 3 years of working with an oncologist and that sort of gave me a head start into oncology my second inspiration came after that when i went and joined trivandrum regional cancer center and there the head of surgical oncology dr thomas cherian who's possibly the biggest influence in my life who's actually made me what i am today you know he taught me how how to deal with patients as human beings how he stressed the importance of you know looking at quality of life not just quantity of life not just treating patients as cases as objects but looking at them as a human being as somebody's father somebody's mother somebody's sister somebody's brother and actually treating them with that empathy this is something you know when you see people actually doing things like that you are inspired to do more and you you know you tend to follow their footsteps so i would say that my Uh, sort of reason for oncology has always been this uh, that i have been lucky to have such figures who could motivate me to want to do more so one thing you must remember is that the life is not something which you know uh, comes on a platter that you can just sit back and relax you have to be involved and that does take a toll on the family you know so you need to have a family who understands it's very important that you you realize because when i finished my ms uh, and i joined trivandrum that is when i got married but immediately after that within a year or two i got in for my mch uh, surgical oncology so i had to leave and the course is so demanding that you cannot think of having a partner with you at that time during the course so again we had to separate then by the time i finished my post graduation a uh, super specialization my wife got for her post graduation nuclear medicine so she left to bangalore and then later she had to go to mumbai for another one year of training so you know we tend to spend a lot of life living apart and then even then once we are together also we we started our life together in manipal afterwards and there also one of the things is you know uh the work hours can be so long because i remember quite often many of the days our surgery theaters would go on till late into the night 9 10 11 12 even later 2 am in the morning and i should just walk home at 2 uh, am in the morning and so it does you know it's not a very conducive atmosphere always because uh, you are at that age when you want to do more you want to do more the surgery is so much more demanding and you really want now i have more time but at those days it was you know you wanted to be sure that you picked up your skills you want to hone your skills more so you do a lot of work and this does tell on the family if you don't have a family if you have a wife who is not employed it's even more difficult because she has to spend a lot of time at home alone luckily for me my wife is also working in the same in a nuclear medicine field so she could understand a lot but even then i remember a time when my wife was actually having a threatened abortion i was in the middle of a esophagus surgery you know and i was doing alone i had just had one intern two interns to help me assist and i was doing thoracotomy part when i got a call from home saying that she's got some bleeding and i couldn't leave the patient halfway i couldn't you know i had to quickly uh, take out the specimen get one somebody from the general surgery to come and to close the incision uh, because i then still had to grow the neck and the abdomen part of it my dentist lent me his car i drove the car home 
took my wife to the hospital dropped her in the labor room and immediately went back to the ot in my ot because the patient was by that time made back into prone position and i had to start doing the laparotomy part of it so it's something which you know can affect you know you cannot be around for all the time same way when a child is growing up it's because of your nature of your work it's not always possible for you to attend you know all school functions or all uh, parents teachers meet sometimes and that uh, i do try it we try a lot i try a lot to make sure that i make myself available for all such meetings but even then sometimes because of a nature of our work it does uh, so you have to be prepared for that but there is because at the other end of it on the other side is the patients who 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 expect so much from you and who are dependent on you so you know you cannot leave them in the lurch so you have always torn between the two sides of this and that is something which i feel does take a toll on a lot of families but if you have an understanding family it is something which can be easily worked out with your partner and with your children i don't actually consider as a tough profession see one thing you must remember about profession there is a chinese saying you know you 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 find something you love doing and then it's no longer work it's no longer profession it's something you love doing then it doesn't feel like work any longer you know people always ask me what do you do for your leisure time but if work itself is your leisure you like to do it you know you get energized for me going to the hospital meeting patients talking to them taking them through their journey breaking the news diagnosis the treatment explaining about the treatment all these things actually are a uh, you know uh energizing to me because i feel i'm contributing something i feel i'm doing something so as long as you love your job it's no longer something which is uh, uh something which makes you know uh, very consider it as very tough but i would encourage anybody who wants to do this profession but it has to come from within you know you must want it my like my son does not want to be a doctor he wants to be an engineer he is interested in maths and computers and he has left biology so there is no way i am not going to force him to take up medicine or to take up uh, this thing that is something which has to come that calling is something which you generally have to feel from within i feel that you know this uh, a lot of the disappointment comes from not being able to communicate effectively with the patient if you communicate effectively even if it is bad news the patients will understand you have to learn to reach them to tell them about what is to be expected and what you know whether it's complications after surgery whether it is the outcome of the treatment whether it is the inoperability all these things are something which you have to learn to slowly break it to the patients and their relations is a difficult question because i would definitely say yes right now because i enjoy what i really don't know much about other professions you know it's like i don't have too much of uh, a yearn for traveling or too much of a yearn for any sort of you know uh, motor car racing or any other this thing so i'm quite happy with it because i really enjoy this the surgery the surgical skills the talking to patients the uh, way you break news the way you uh, you know you derive a lot of energy from a patient to come for follow up you know how much you can actually communicate with them all these are things which are actually become a part of you and i would definitely like to do it again and again only things i could do it better i could do it better maybe if i come back in life and i'm asked to do it again i can learn from my mistakes i can learn from the way i have initially you know initially we have a more impulsive with the young age i remember when i was manipal so many patients if you don't choose your patients properly if you don't do the correct surgery for the correct patient you will end up in problem and you learn that only the hard way sometimes you know now this is again something which i have learned a lot by just you know i must thank my professor dr thomas cherian also for this a lot for this and also the by interacting with patients a lot you know you learn to recognize body language you learn to recognize how for me the single most important thing is when the, you're breaking bad news the first thing that you have to do is you have to give them hope you have to give them the reason to go forward for treatment you know many people are so down that they don't want to go for treatment they get disappointed but you have to give them a reason to live a reason to go forward to look forward in life what is next and i find that it is different for different because something which always works for women especially in breast cancer 
you know if i tell them that see your children are looking up to you tomorrow if they develop the same disease 30 years down the line they are going to behave exactly as you behave now so you think of it as god has given you the disease to show them how i will you know uh, show them what they should do if they ever get the disease again it's a powerful motivation for a lot of women for some it may not be children for some it may be work some it may be other things so you have to find what motivates a woman to be able to accept the diagnosis and to go forward for treatment i must tell every patient to be open with the other oncologists because you have to tell them what you expect what you want you know for some life is very important for some it is a quality of life which is much more important for some they are more worried about the pain for some they are more worried about the suffering and if you tell your patient what are your fears if you tell the doctor what are your fears exactly out of this treatment then the doctor can appropriately take action you know if you are more worried about the hair loss you are more worried about having pain i can ensure that most of your treatment will be without any pain you know some people are not so much worried about say loss of breath but they are much more worried about the pain they are more worried about arm swelling they are more worried about you know the side effects of chemotherapy so what is it that you are worried about what are the your main concerns these have to be communicated effectively to the doctor i see him on the corridor doctor is there and he is there with a beaming smile and he calls us in um i since i am very confident i am very happily sitting in front of him my husband though a bit skeptical uh, the, fa- the expression on doctor's face doesn't say that there is anything wrong in this universe uh, the world moves on um in a very subtle way doctor said that uh, you know uh, Uh, there's a small lump that has been found and we should send uh, 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 the mass for biopsy test and uh, you don't have to worry the courage that doctor uh, gave me dr vijay kumar gave me and my family is what i see today even today because he told me he gave my husband and myself the courage to think that and understand that cancer is curable he explained way everything in detail he was very supportive in fact the first thing he said was uh, i have good news and bad news for you but the good news is that your disease is curable you will come out of it safe the bad news is we'll have to do a mastectomy in fact i said okay i waited for a couple of weeks and then in fact i was diabetic and they wanted my diabetes to be under control i went and did the surgery around 24th of march i was in hospital for a week because i'm allergic to painkillers doctor had a very tough time with me in fact i couldn't take any painkillers and my diabetes shot up after my surgery uh, it took a long time for my wound to heal after that uh, and every time he comes to hospital the first thing he does is come and see me he uh, sort of pull me out of my i was low very depressed he made me come out of it he is very lovable he is a very genuine doctor mm-hmm.